Mga posibleng tanong na maaaring lumabas ngayong darating na Philippine Nursing Licensure Examination ang alay ko sa inyo for today. 15. Board exam type of questions that will cover your foundation of nursing practice. If you want to know more about that, stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse in the GOVD degree medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos once a week. Don't miss that ad. Subscribe now. Hit that notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch when it was uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that would really help and know that you like to see more content like this. Without further ado, you guys, let's jump into the video. Hi everyone, welcome back. Nga naku pasensya na po kayo. It's been a month since the last time I uploaded. Kaya naman gusto kong humingi ng patawad, pasensya, paumanhin sa lahat ng mga naghihintay ng video upload ko. Pero um uh, medyo naging busy lang po talaga ako lately eh medyo maraming ganap sa life kaya hindi ako masyado nakakapag-upload nako pasensya pasensya na po talaga pero huwag kayong mag-alala kasi binabasa ko lahat ng mga comments nyo lahat ng mga nag nagme-message sa akin sa Facebook um, sa Instagram sa Snapchat sa nag email sa akin nako maraming bumabalik at nagpapasalamat dahil sa nakapasa daw po sila sa board exam and I want you guys to know that none of that will be possible if it wasn't because of you because you all do the hard work and malaking pasasalamat ko at naging instrumento ako para naman makapasa kayo na talaga namang nagkap, nagpapataba ng puso ko maraming 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 salamat po sa pagtitiwala and once again congratulations you are now a certified registered nurse. Kaya naman, para tulungan pa yung iba natin mga kakabarong nurses na talaga namang maghahanda ngayong darating na Philippine Nursing Licensure Examination, isang panibagong nursing test banking video ang alay ko sa inyo for today. Kagaya ng sinabi ko dun sa intro, 15 board exam type of questions that will cover your foundation of nursing practice. Ngayon, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung ibang mga nursing test banking videos na ginawa ko sa channel ko. Also, some of the other um, nursing topics I created um, I'll be putting the links of the playlist on the description box check that out or kapag nagpapaut itong icon button dito i-click mo lang yun kasi ililink ko sila kasama ng ibang mga playlist ko sa nursing kung hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe papa, papaswerte ngayong ngayong para talaga namang ano ka makapasa ka mag-subscribe ka na i-share mo na yung video na to i-like mo na tong video na to kasi napakalaking tulong po nun sa, sa channel ko maraming maraming salamat po ulit Kaya naman, medyo mahaba nga itong video na to Hindi ko napatatagalin pa But, before we further proceed O, di ba nakalimutan ko na yung paano yung galaw Pero, before I further proceed I would just like to remind you about the main intention Why we're doing such videos like this The reason why we're doing nursing test backing videos Is because I want you guys to have the full grasp of the rationalization So that, when the time comes that you're gonna take the actual board exam Kahit pa ikot-ikotin ka, kahit anong gawin sa'yo, anong mga klase ng tanong, pagbalibalik na rin yung mga choices, you know exactly what is the answer because you know the rationalization by heart. I also want to encourage you to please put your scores on the comment section. Huwag mahihiya kasi wala tayo nandito. Huwag <laughs> mahihiya kasi pinaghirapan nyo yan. Again, the main goal is for you to have the full grasp and clear understanding regarding the rationalization. Without further ado, hindi ko na patatagalin pa. Let me switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Yo, hi everybody, welcome back sa ating formal discussion on your uh, foundation of nursing practice, nursing test banking video. Now, let this be your nursing study guide. Nako, paraming maraming maraming salamat nga po sa patuloy na pagsusuporta niya sa akin channel despite of not being so active lately because I think the last time I actually uploaded was a month ago. Nako. Maraming maraming salamat po sa patuloy nyo pa rin pagsusuporta. At alam ko marami sa inyo ang inaantabayanan itong next video upload natin. 
And gusto ko lang ulit kayo batiin sa mga bagong graduate or no, sa mga, yeah, tama, sa mga bagong graduate at sa mga bagong pasa sa ating board exam. Marami nga sa inyong bumabalik sa aking nagko-comment at bumabalik. Minsan yung iba pa sa inyo nagme-message sa akin. Nagpapasalamat kasi malaking tulong daw itong mga nursing videos na ina-upload ko sa, dito sa aking channel. Kaya naman, I see you guys, I hear you, and I just wanna say welcome and you guys deserve all of the success that you are having right now. More power sa inyong lahat and congratulations ulit. Hindi ko na patatagalin pa, mag-proceed na tayo. Now, let me give you the objectives for our today's discussion. Now, I will be providing you and discuss to you, providing, uh, boarding some type of questions. And the second objective, the main intention, the second goal is to provide rationalization for each board exam type of question. Now, let me provide to you the instructions for today's examination. Now, you'll be given 15 board exam type of questions. I'll be reading the questions and the choices for you. You have five seconds to answer each question. The answer is revealed instantly after each question with rationalization. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Good luck. Ngayon, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung other nursing test making video na kranate ko, I'll be putting the actual playlist on the icon button or basahin mo yung description box kasi naandun sila. I-upload ko rin itong video na to sa aking Facebook page. So if you have Facebook, please, please do like, share, and follow mo na yung aking Facebook page. I'll be putting the link to all my social media accounts on the description box below. Read that one out. Check that one out. That's all for you. Now, if there's anything that I want you to take out from this video, like I said, it is the rationalization. Okay? Huwag matigas ang ulo. Proceed na tayo. Eto na. Board exam type of question number one. So, the most appropriate nursing order for patient who develops dysmia and shortness of breath will be ano daw? Ito yung tanong. Ito na tayo. Ano daw yung pinaka appropriate order most? So lahat ito, pag nakita ka ng ganyan, most, lahat ito appropriate. Pero ano yung most um, appropriate order for the patient who develops what? Desmia, difficulty of breathing, and SOB, shortness of breath. Alin dito, nurses? Is it A, maintain the patient on strict bed rest at all times? Is it B, maintain the patient in an ortho? Topnic position as needed. C. Administer oxygen by Venturi mask at 24% as needed. Or D. Allow one hour rest period between activities. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Nako, medyo madali itong tanong na to. Siguro mga nasa moderate level. Wow, moderate level. Eto na. What is the answer? Letter B. Maintain the patient in an orthopnic position as needed. Here's the reason why. Listen, you guys. When a patient develops dyspnea in SOB or shortness of breath, the orthopnic position encourages maximum chest expansion and keeps the abdom um, abdominal organs or abdominal organs from pressing against the diaphragm. Thus, improving ventilation. Bed rest and oxygen by Venturi mask at 24% would improve oxygenation of the tissues and cells but must be ordered by a physician. Allowing for rest periods decreases the possibility of hypoxia. Hence, the answer is letter B. Nakuha ba yon? Nakuha. Board exams have question number two. The nurse observes that Mr. Adams or Adam Adams Adams begins to have increased difficulty breathing. She elevates the head of the bed to the high Fowler's position, which decreases his respiratory distress. The nurse documents this breathing as so. Tinatanong ka paano mo dito document yung klase ng breathing na ito ni Mr. Adams. Increased difficulty of breathing when she elevates the head of the bed to the high Fowler's position. Uh, which decreases his respiratory. So, nag, ano, na, nag, um, who's this? nag niya nung in-increase mo yung position ng bed. Paano mo siya i-document? Is it a takip ni? Ah, takip ni. Takip niya. Sorry po, bizaya. B, i-yup uh, niya. Or C, or top niya. Or D, hyperventilation. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good. Letter C, orthopnea. Now, orthopnea nga po ang tamang sagot. Now, 
this or topnia is actually described or yeah described as a difficulty of breathing except in an upright position takipnia is rapid respiration characterized by quick shallow breaths yupnia actually typographical error to dapat ito ha huh? e u p n e c a ah, c n e a yupnia is normal respiration alam niyo naman yon quiet rhythmic and without effort, effortless breathing. That is yupnya. Hence, the answer to this question is letter C. Nako, gamitin mo itong mga visual pres- uh, representation natin dyan, ha? Para sa pag-aaral mo. Para naman talaga sa mga visual learners natin ay talaga mag-stick sa'yo ang concept. Okay? Now, body some type of question number three. The physician orders a platelet count to be performed on Mrs. Smith after breakfast. The nurse is responsible for kung ang physician mo daw, ang doctor mo, primary provider mo ay nag-order ng platelet count after breakfast. Ano ang responsibility mo as a nurse? A. Instructing the patient about uh, the diagnostic test. B. Writing the order for this test. Um, C. Giving the patient breakfast. Or D. All of the above. Your five seconds starts now. Medyo tricky itong tanong na itwi. Hi, wa kasi sentido ko mo nang gagamitin. Cherries. Okay. What is the answer to this question, you guys? Letter C. Very good. Giving the patient a breakfast. All right. So bakit nga po a platelet count evaluates the number of platelets in the circulating blood volume. The nurse is responsible for giving the patient breakfast at the scheduled time. The physician is responsible for instructing the patient about the test and for writing the order for the test. So ito, instructing patient about the diagnostic test, physician yan. Writing the order of the doctor uh, of the test, hindi ikaw yan, ang doktor yan, huwag kang masyado nagaano diyan. Okay, so malinaw nga yung position may commercial. Okay, malinaw yun. So proceed na tayo. Board exam tayo question number four. All right, so Mrs. Mitchell has been given a copy of her diet. The nurse discusses the food allowed on a 500 milligram low sodium diet. So, mayroong sodium restriction. These includes, kapag daw may sodium restriction ng pasyente mo, uh, specifically 500 milligram of sodium. Paano to? Ano-anong mga pwede nitong lam- lamanan? Lamanan? Ano yung mga pwedeng laman nito sa diet based as choices na ipoprovide sa'yo? Is it a, a ham and Swiss cheese sandwich on whole wheat bread b mashed potatoes and broiled chicken c a toast salad with oil and vinegar and olives and d chicken brew uh, bouillon or bouillon pahala na basta yon <laughs> your five seconds starts now O, oh, tapos na nga tayo sa ating 5 seconds. Medyo mahaba yung binigay ko sa inyo, ha? Okay, what is the answer to this? Letter B, mashed potatoes and broiled chicken. Ang sarap. Bakit nga itong sagot? Kasi nga, uh, mashed potatoes and broiled chicken are low in natural sodium chloride. Ham, olives, and chicken uh, bouillon contains large amounts of sodium and are contraindicated on a low-sodium diet. Period. Proceed na tayo. Board exam type of question number 5. Nako, heparin in Fusion, heparin sodium, heparin administration. Here's the question. The physician orders a maintenance dose of 5,000 units of subcutaneous heparin as anticoagulant daily. Nursing responsibilities for Mrs. Mitchell no, uh, now include. So ano daw ang mga nursing responsibilities mo sa pasyente mong si Mrs. Mitchell na nagre-receive ng heparin, um, daily heparin, 5,000 units sub-Q. Yun ang tanong. Is it a reviewing daily activ- uh, activated partial thromboplastin time, um, APTT, and protombin time, PT? B. Reporting an APTT above 45 seconds to the physician. Is it A. Assessing the patient for signs and symptoms of frank and occult bleeding? Is it D. All of the above? Kikaw nurse, anong responsibility mo? What is your nursing responsibility to Mrs. Mitchell? Your five seconds starts now. Mm. 
Time's up, you guys. Perfect. What is the answer? Medyo mahaba ito, ha? Letter D. Papaliwari ko sa inyo kung bakit lahat ito ay nursing responsibility mo sa pasyente mong uh, si Mrs. Mitchell. Na nag um daily heparin, uh, what's this? Um, daily heparin treatment. D nga po ang tamang sagot. All of the above. Above? <laughs> all of the above. Why? Because uh, all of the identified nursing responsibilities are pertinent when a patient is receiving heparin. A normal activated partial thromboplastin time is 16 to 25 seconds in the normal thrombo. Uh, protrombin time is 12 to 15 seconds. These level must remain within 2 or uh, 2 to 2 and 1 half the normal levels. All patients receiving anticoagulant therapy must be observed for signs and symptoms of frank and occult bleeding including anion, hemorrhage, hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, restlessness, pallor, cold and clammy skin, thirst and confusion. Blood pressure should be measured every 4 hours at the patient and the patient should be instructed to report promptly any bleeding that occurs with tooth, uh, tooth brushing, bowel movements, urination, or heavy prolonged menstruation. Hence, the answer is letter D. Nakuha ba yun, you guys? Nako, nakakalimang tanong na tayo, ha? Kamusta mga scores nyo? Laban lang yan. Board exam type of question number six, the four main concepts common to nursing that appear in each of the current conceptual models are, nako, Foundation of nursing practice. Funda, ano to? Tag dito, ah, theoretical nursing. Alin daw yung four main concepts na lagi mong nakikita sa mga conceptual models natin sa nursing. Nako, kung hindi mo pa nakikita yung playlist ko na ko yung about sa nursing theories, ay link ko siya dyan, panoorin mo yun. Nako, ang laking tulong nun. Yung isang nga para parang nag-viral pa ang daming shares, kaya panoorin mo, I'm sure, na makakarelate ka. Is it A, a person nursing environment medicine? Is it B, person health nursing support system? C, person health psychology nursing? Or D, person environment health nursing? Okay, your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Of course, letter D. Person, Environment, Health, and Nursing. The focus concepts that have been accepted by all theorists as the focus of nursing practice from the time of Florence Nightingale include the person receiving nursing care, his environment, his health, on the health uh, illness continuum, and the nursing actions necessary to meet these, um, uh, these needs. Alright, so nakuha ba yun? Nakuha. Proceed na tayo, you guys. Board exam type of question number 7. Ako, familiar kayo dito. Master na master, uh, master nyo to. Maslow's. And this question is about that. I review natin yung Maslow, you guys. Board exam type of question number 7. In Maslow's hierarchy of physiologic needs, the human need of greatest priority is. So, kung susundin mo ang Maslow, alin daw doon ang greatest priority? Ang gandang review, hindi ba? Base sa mga options na ito. Is it A, love? Is it B, elimination? Is it C, nutrition? Is it D, oxygen? Your five seconds starts now. Nako. Nako, nako, sisiyo na sisiyo to talaga naman sa mga masteral ang Maslow. What is your answer? Very good letter, D. Maslow, who defined a need as a satisfaction whose absence causes illness, considered oxygen to be the most important physiologic need. Yes, under nga to ng ating biological and physiological need. Now, without it, human life could not exist. Hello. According to this theory, other physiologic needs including food, water, elimination, shelter, rest, and sleep activity and temperature regulation must be must be met before proceeding to the next hierarchical levels on physiologic uh, uh, psychosocial needs. Pero ang sagot dito is very good letter D. Proceed na tayo. Boarding some type of question number 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead Brenda 
seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? So, kung meron ka daw pasyente na Brenda, tapos yung family, um, gusto nila yung... Um, nag a sila or parang nag a sila doon sa pagdo-donate ng organ. Ano yung responsibility mo as a nurse? Is it a discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased? Is it B, listen to their concerns and answer their questions honestly? Is it C, encourage them to sign the consent from right away? or consent form right away. Is it D, tell them the body will not be available for wake or funeral? Your five seconds starts now. Yung mga nag, uh, nag-handle dyan, time's up na ha. Dito to, applicable to, alam na alam to ng mga, mga nurse na nag-handle ng palliative care sa mga pasyente nila. Ito to, what is your answer? Letter B, listen to their concerns and answer their questions honestly. Bakit nurses? Ito kasi, the brain-dead patient's family needs support and reassurance in making a decision about organ donation. Because transplants are done within hours of death, decisions about organ donation must be made as soon as possible. However, the family's concern must be addressed before members are asked to sign a consent form. The body of an organ donor is available for burial. Period. Nako, nurses, malapit na malapit na tayo. Parang ilang last eh, questions na lang ba? Parang last seven questions na tayo. Nakakarami na ba kayo? Nakakarami na. Eto na talaga. Board exams have question number nine. A new head nurse on a unit is distressed about the poor staffing on the 11pm to 7am shift. What should she do? Yung bagong head nurse nyo ron na problema sa scheduling. Kasi kulang yung staff Uh, kulang yung staff between 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. So, anong gagawin ng head nurse nyo? Is it A, complain to her fellow nurses? Is it B, wait until she sh- uh, she knows more about the unit? Or C, discuss the problem with her supervisor? Or D, inform the staff that they must volunteer to rotate? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Nako, very good. C. Discuss the problem with her supervisor. Although a new head nurse should initially spend time observing the unit for its strengths and weakness, she should take action if a problem threatens patient safety. In this case, the supervisor is the resource person to approach. Um, proper channeling nga po ang tinatanong nito. Uh, ang klase ng tanong nito, channeling. Yung big sabihin yung reporting kanino ka kung ikaw yung head nurse, si Sino yung nakataas sa'yo? Next na nakatataas sa'yo. Proper channeling. Nilito ka lang ng very, very light nito sa new head nurse. Pero laba na yan. Patient safety issue ito kasi pagkulang ang staff ng shift ng 11pm to 7am at ang daming dagsa ng pasyente, patay. Mag-jeopardize yung quality ng um, quality ng service ng mga nurses mo. Kasi may mga papagod yung mga nurse, patang patay yung mga bedside mo kung nasa ward ka, hindi ba? So yun lang yun. Kaya... Pumasok dito yung concept ng patient safety. Okay? So, board exam type of question number 10. Which of the following principles of primary nursing has proven the most satisfying to the patient and nurse? Ha, malalaman mo yung klase ng tanong as you read the choices. Is it A, continuity of patient care promotes efficient, cost-effective nursing care? B, autonomy and authority for planning are best delegated to a nurse who knows the patient well? Is it C, accountability in clearest when one nurse, uh, I'm sorry, accountability is clearest when one nurse is responsible for the overall plan and its implementation. D, the holistic approach provides for a therapeutic relationship, continuity, and efficient nursing care. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good. Yung mga sagot na merong holistic, nyako, medyo abangan mo na yan sa board exam, medyo manginig ka 
umuga ka ng bere bere light, okay? Pero tip lang naman yun. Okay, ang sagot nga po dito is letter D. Why? Studies have shown that patients and nurses, and, uh, patients and nurses both respond well to primary nursing care units. Patients feel less anxious and isolated and more secure because they allowed to participate in planning their own care. Nurses feel personal satisfaction, much of it related to a positive feedback from the patients. They also seem to gain a greater sense of achievement and spirit they corpse. Alright, so nakuha ba yon? Nakuha. Body sound type question number 11. If nurse administers an injection to a patient who refuses the injection, she has committed. So, nurses, tandaan na, ka, na itong klase ng tanong na to, nag-a-apply to sa actual area. Okay, pagka nakagraduate ka na, nag apply to kasi personally na naranasan ko to. So, if a nurse, so ik, kung ako daw to, nag-administer, mag administer ako ng injection sa pasyente ko, eh nag-refuse ng injection, tapos binigay ko pa rin. Ano yung nakumit ko? Is it A, assault and battery? Is it B, negligence? C, malpractice? Or D, none of the above? Your five seconds starts now. Nako, ito yon. Letter A is the right answer. Assault and battery. Hindi battery na triple A ever ready, kundi battery. Okay? <laughs> A nga pong sagot, ito, i-define ko sa inyo to. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Battery is the unlawful touching of another person or the carrying out of a threatened physical harm. Thus, any act that nurse performs or the patient against his will is considered assault and battery. Okay? So, the answer is letter A. Nako. Ito talaga. Mahalagang malaman mo itong jurisprudence na to, mga concepts sa jurisprudence kasi, nursing jurisprudence, kasi nag apply ito sa actual area. Kapag ayaw ng pasyente mo namang, ito maipasok ko lang, ayaw ng pasyente mo na magpa-refuse, uh, edi gawan mo ng dama. Dama ng ama. Or, i Tapos, i-refer mo sa social worker para naman talaga na mo, report mo sa physician. Para naman talaga naman in, uh, sa mga lawsuit is uh, ligtas ka. Ligtas ka! Yun. Okay. So, board exam type of question number 12. If a patient asks the nurse her opinion about a particular physician and the nurse replies that the physician is incompetent, the nurse could be held liable for... Nako, ito, another uh, jurisprudence uh, type of question. Ang pasyente mo daw ay nagtatanong regarding doon sa physician. Eh, ikaw tong si nurse, medyo ano ka, tawag dito, si Marites ka, sinagdagan mo, sinabi mo yung physician na to, incompetent, hindi siya masyadong magaling, kagalingan. Ikaw na nurse na nagsabi ng Marites, ikaw si Marites na nurse, ay nag-comment ng anong klaseng um, uh, liable ka sa anong klaseng, what's this, uh, lawsuit. Is it A, slander? Is it B, libel? Is it C, assault? Or D, respondent superior? Your five seconds starts now. Kung nakinig ka sa question number 11, of course, hindi mo isasagot yung assault, ha? Okay, so assault out na agad ito. Very good. What is your answer? Letter A, slander. Now, let me, de uh, what's this? Let me define to you this. Para mas malinaw sa'yo. Slander po, oral communication that injuries an individual's reputation is considered slander. Oral communication that injures, sorry po. Sorry, let me repeat that. Oral communication po that injures an individual reputation is considered slander. Paninira. Written communication that does the same is considered libel. Anong pinakaiba ng slander mo oral? Oral, uh, what's this? O oral, oral. <laughs> uh, paninira through verbal words. Libel naman po pag may kasama ng written written communication. Bawa, nagsulat ka ng sa isang perasong papel lang kas chismisan, charing, uh, about sa doktor mo, about sa kapa, mo nurse, pwede kang kasuhan ng libel. Slander, 
yung mga chismis. Oral chismis. Oral chismis? Is there such thing? Pero yun yun. Malino ba sa inyo yun? Malino. Ngayon, bago ko i-reveal yung last three questions natin, kumusta naman po ang mga scores nyo dyan? Huwag ka mahihiya. Ilagay mo yung scores mas bababa ha? Because I really want to evaluate the scores of my students to measure my effectivity as your teacher. Teacher? And huwag mahihiya. No shame, no shame. Ang goal nga nito is makuha mo yung rationalization. That's the main intention of this video. All right? Right? Ngayon, gusto lang kita ngayayahan. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung other nursing videos na ginawa ko, panoorin mo yon because that's all for you. I'm pretty sure and I'm very much 100% sure you're gonna use most of my consents in your preparation for the board, for your study, in the college, and what's this? And also, let me know if you have other video contents in nursing that you want us to do. Um, medyo nag-iisip-isip ako ng mga panibagong klaseng pagtuturo sa nursing o yung mga concepts na hindi ko pa natatouch. Bigyan nyo ako ng idea. Lagay nyo yan sa baba. Okay? Asahan ko yan. I'll be waiting and uh, waiting for your comments and suggestions. Alright. Board exam to have a question number 13. A registered nurse reaches to answer the telephone on a busy pediatric unit. Momentarily turning away from a three-month-old infant, she has been weighing. The infant falls off the scale, suffering a skull fracture. The nurse could be charged with... No, yun ang sitwasyon. So, nag, nagtitimbang ka ng sanggol, three-month-old, eh, nag-ring yung phone. Sinagot mo. Tapos nakaling nakalingit ka ng nakalingit ka ng bahagya. Yung bata gumulong, nagkaroon ng skull fracture. So ikaw as nurse, anong pwedeng i-charge sa iyo? Anong pwedeng ikaso sa iyo? Ipapatulfo ka. <laughs> Kung ipapatulfo ka, anong ikaso ikakaso sa iyo? Is it a defamation? Is it B assault? Is it C battery or D malpractice? Mhm. Mm-hmm. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Letter D, malpractice. Now, malpractice is defined as injuries or unprofessional actions that harm another. It involves professional misconduct such as omission or commission of an act that a reasonable and prudent nurse would would or would not do. In this example, the standard of care was breached. A three-month-old infant should never be left unattended on a scale. Period. Your five seconds. Five seconds. Ah, oh, next na tayo. Board is of question number 14. Which of the following is an example of nursing malpractice? Oh, pag-usapan natin ng medyo matindi pa. Yung isa pa, yung malpractice. Um, ano daw ang example ng malpractice base sa mga choices na to? Is it A, the nurse administers penicillin to a patient with a documented history of allergy to the drug. The patient experiences an allergic reaction and has cerebral damage resulting from anorec- uh, anoxia. B, the nurse applies a hot water bottle or a heating pad to the abdomen of a patient with abdominal cramming. C, the nurse assists a patient out of bed with a bed locked in position. The patient slips and fractures his right humerus. D, the nurse administers the wrong medication to a patient and the patient vomits. This information is documented and reported to the physician and the nursing supervisor. Kung nakinig ka ng explanation ng definition natin ng malpractice sa question number 13, magiging madali sa'yo sagutin itong number 14. Magkapatid itong tanong na to. Bigyan kita ng 5 seconds, ha? Go, bebe. Bebe? Bisaya ba yan? Alright, time's up you guys. Medyo mabilis, pero kung mabilis naman, ipost mo lang tapos pag-aralan mo itong tanong na to. Okay, what is your answer? Very good. Letter A. The three elements necessary to establish a nursing malpractice are the nursing error. Administering penicillin to a patient with documented allergy to the drug. Injury, cerebral damage, and uh, proximal cause administering the penicillin. Uh, cause the cerebral damage, applying a hot water bottle or heating pad to a patient without a physician's order does not include the three uh, required components. Assisting a patient out of bed with a bed locked in position is a correct nursing practice. Therefore, the fracture has not the result of malpractice. Administering an incorrect medication is a nursing error. 
However, if such action resulted in a serious illness or chronic problem, the nurse could be sued for malpractice. So kapag may actual damage sa pasyente mo, yung ginawa mong um, action, that's actually one of the components that you can consider it as malpractice. Question A is one good example. Alright, last question sa nga tayo, make this one count. Which of the following signs and symptoms would the nurse expect to, uh, to find when assessing an Asian patient for post-operative pain? following abdominal surgery. Kapag Asian daw ang pasyente mo, ito ay base lang naman sa mga survey. Sa mga survey sa pag-aaral. So, nilagay nila to. Kapag Asian ang pasyente mo, post-op, ano yung expect mo sa, 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 what, tito? Sa pasyente nyo. Is it A, decreased blood pressure and heart rate and shallow respirations? B, quiet crying? Is it C, immobility, diaphoresis, and avoidance of deep breathing or coughing? Is it D, changing position every two hours? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. Nako, for some reason, medyo nakaka-relate ako dito. Dahil nga po ako ay nagwo-work dito abroad. Nararanasan ko to. Mostly, ang mga pasyente dito ay OA pagdating sa pain. Charis, hindi naman po. Pero totoo yan, kasi sa Pilipinas, normally yung mga pasyente natin sa sa Pilipinas, talaga namang ano sila, yung mataas yung to, hindi naman lahat, pero karamihan mataas yung tolerance sa pain, hindi sila mara OA. Pero dito, nako, kaunting kibot lang, just ko, Mario Sep. Pero wala namang po, no harm, sinasabi ko lang yung base sa experience ko. Ha? I don't mean to offend anybody. But yun lang naman po. So what is the answer? Is it? Is it? The answer is letter C. Immobility, diaphoresis, and avoidance to deep uh, of deep breathing or coughing. Now, an Asian patient is likely to hide his pain. Consequently, the nurse must observe for objective signs. In an abdominal surgery patient, these might include immobility, diaphoresis, and avoidance of deep breathing or coughing, as well as increased heart rate, shallow respiration, or stemming from pain upon moving the diaphragm and respiratory muscles, and guarding or rigidity of the abdominal wall. Such a patient is unlikely to display emotion such as crying. Alright? So, yun na nga po. Diyan na nga natatapos ang ating lecture for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics and contents that you want us to do. Comment it down below. I'll be waiting for your suggestion, you guys. Abangan nyo nga po yung next video natin after 7 days. Ipapangako ko sa inyo, magkukumit na talaga ako. Eto na talaga. <coughs> Sala. After 7 days, isang panibagong nursing video nga ang ali ko sa inyo. Ngayon, itulungan nyo na nga ako. Malapit na tayo mag-15K. Oh my God. Tulungan nyo na nga ako. Ipamalita nyo na sa radyo sila ang pinakabago, pinaka-fresh at ang pinaka-libre nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And I'll see you again next time. Have a good one, you guys. Mwah! Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. I hope you learned something. Happy grow my channel. You are already here. You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team Cool Talk. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. You put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists I created for you. I'll be putting the links on the description box. Or simply click the second button right here. Let's connect. Follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Gave Official. I would also like to invite you to please like, share, and follow my Facebook page. Page. The link is also on the description box. I'll see you again after seven days. You have a good one.